Welcome to the examination interpretation of patterns for recognition. Today we'll be going over blood spatter in regards to determining things like overall velocity, the direction of travel, and what activities would create the different uh, patterns we would see. So I want to start off with talking about the, the different velocity of spatter and what how each of them looks different. All right, so with low velocity, you have, it's, as you can read here, only uh, influenced by gravity and it's also going to be on you know, slight you know, slow movements, okay? So for example here, what you're gonna see with low velocity is a much more rounded droplet. Uh, and this would be, if you were to say, yo, what direction was it dropped from? Typically you view low velocity is being dropped from approximately a 90 degree angle. That's what creates this nice uh, round droplet. Yes, it has uh, what we will consider to be, uh, we will call them spines, but if you want to say the kind of jagged edges that stick out, yes, it does have that, but for the overall shape, it is fairly round and you know, cylindrical. So that's low velocity, and if you want to compare that to medium velocity, what you're going to have in medium velocity, and I'll show you some other examples later on uh, of what other shapes that you would have with medium velocity, but here's an example here of uh, what medium velocity can look like. <clears throat> it's going to be created by moderate forces, and by moderate, I mean anything from, uh, you know, someone striking someone else with a, uh, a weapon, such as, you know, it could be a, a a bat, uh, sometimes even your own hands or fist, um, all the way up to you know a gunshot wound to somewhere else other than the head or that's farther away. Um, you don't always get high velocity from guns, but you can. So medium velocity could also be uh, different incidents or accidents that happen through, with a, say, a car crash if it's at a higher speed. But either way, this is something, like I said, moderate forces. <clears throat> They're going to create smaller droplets. Those droplets are going to be less of a circular shape like you had with low velocity and more likely to be elliptical um, or if you want to say oval shaped. So we'll have that. Um, and if we want to move on to uh, high velocity, you're talking about extreme forces like a... I mentioned earlier a gunshot wound, if it is um, either close range, so you'll see this say in suicides or um, close range shots um, can create this. We can also have um, high pressure lines that you might see <clears throat> with the, uh, say, steam or other. Uh, rarely is it just water or liquid by itself, but say a high pressure gas line. If there's anything like that that happens to to have a leak uh, at a valve, that, you know, that valve blows, um, it can, if it's someone's close enough to it, it can provide enough pressure to cause an injury to someone and lead to high pressure or high velocity <clears throat> blood spatter. Um, also explosions, uh, incendiary explosions can cause some of these, uh, this type of blood spatter. So either way, what you're gonna see is going to be very fine droplets, almost as you can see here, almost looks like a, a mist, um, but very small droplets. Um, and some will look more elliptical. You'll have a combination of elliptical and the very small round uh, droplets. But either way, the big key is they are much smaller. Um, and because they are so small, they tend to look almost pinkish as compared to. Um, or a lighter color as compared to um, how some of your other blood droplets will look like a, um, a deeper red. <clears throat> okay, so talked about that. Now I kind of want to go into the whole idea of angle of impact, right? We talked about low velocity being almost like at 90 degrees, and you'll see that pattern uh, remain up until I get it changes a little bit from you know, say 70 to 60 to be a little bit more elongated but basically what you're going to notice is as we look 
at the uh, say 90 degree, very round. Yes, it has the little jagged edges we will call spines, and it has spines all around it. Okay, or at least pretty equal as far as how uh, the size of them and the number of them. Okay, and then as your angle decreases, you'll see how the blood or uh, blood droplet will elongate, and also the uh, the size and number of spines and satellites change. And I'll explain what satellites and spines are here shortly. But either way, this will, those change in size and also location. And eventually, as you go down to, you know, you get farther, say 20 and even 10 degrees, you don't really have much in regards to uh, a whole lot of, you know, it's not as jagged of edges. Um, very elongated, and then you're going to have what we call satellites um, on the end of that. Okay, so what does that tell us? Well, let's look into it a little bit more. So it tells us, it gives us what we call angle of incident. And if you break that down, basically it's telling you based on the shape of that blood droplet, you can determine where it would have come from and at what angle it would have contacted the surface it's on, whether it be on a floor, on a wall, a uh, door, uh, or any surface uh, that it comes in contact with. It does become a little more difficult on surfaces, and this is the case with determining any aspect of blood pattern, uh, blood spatter pattern. It becomes more difficult to determine these things when it comes into contact with, say, um, either really absorbent uh, surfaces such as carpet, um, or, you know, porous surfaces. Um, and the other thing is if it's something that is, uh, if you have like weather plays a role, I should put it that way. If it's raining out, then it will impact, first of all, how long this evidence will stay there. Uh, and then how reliable it is because blood droplets can be, as more liquid comes in, say with rain, that will change it. Um, and then obviously in snow, it doesn't work quite the same way. It's You can still see patterns, but it just changes what you see. <clears throat> okay, so um, going back to this general concept of angle of incident, I will not expect you to know the pattern. Uh, and I, you know, for example, on a test, I'm not going to have anything on there where you will have to tell me, hey, what is the... Uh, what is the pattern, uh, or not pattern, what's the equation for determining angle of incident, right? <clears throat> but I may ask you, okay, here are the measurements. Now you tell me what the angle of incident is, and I can provide the equation for you. You still have to do it in your calculator. But either way, it's really simple. Finding the width, you know, the, the smaller, narrower side, measure that first, divide that by the length that you get, and be aware that, as you can see in the, uh, the picture or image here, that you're only going to measure what we consider the overall body of the, um, of the blood droplet. You don't follow the elongation um, all the way to the end. Where you can see the overall um, body kind of end and before it starts to extend out into what we call a satellite, you need to stop that, like I said, stop the length uh, measurement there at the end of the body. Okay. But either way, you take that width divided by the length. And then what you're going to do is uh, use the inverted sign, which is typically on a calculator or on uh, a lot of cell phones. When you go to the second function or just, uh, and that can be either second or FN for function on your uh, phone or calculator and sign, you will get the option to come up with this, what looks like sine negative one exponent or exponent of negative one, but it's called the inverted sine. If you just say inverted sine of width divided by length, just as it's shown here, then you will get your answers in uh, degrees. What degree, you know, what angle of degree does it hit that surface at, okay? And that can tell you, help you determine where someone was lo um, located and how they were positioned um, 
when that particular injury took place. Okay. All right, so I said I would explain what spines and satellites are or how they help us, and that's what I'm, uh, I'll show you this, and then I'll show you some other examples of, um, that would be a little easier to see and more of a realistic look. So um, yeah, spines are anywhere that you would have an extension of the uh, of the body and of the and I call it the body of the blood droplet right as you can see here the spines that are located there they are still connected to the body of the blood droplet and then as you extend out if you find an area that is I'm going to use my cursor here <clears throat> for this example right you have it's still connected to the body but then where it looks like it's forming another uh, almost like a smaller version of a droplet. That's where it changes from being a spine to a satellite. And what you're going to find here is, okay, so this is what you would see if it were more like a closer to a 90 degree angle, right? But then if you have movement involved, all right, you're gonna have this these satellites that happen have here elongation of the droplet so it's no longer round like we discussed earlier right you have this elongation and then you have a spine reaching out here and then you have your satellite and the easy way to determine direction of travel look at your blood droplet right look for your cell uh, look for your spine or spines and then see if you can see any satellites and where you are seeing the majority of your satellites or the side that you're seeing the majority of the satellites, that's basically the end of that droplet. And so since this is the end, the origin is basically going to be a straight line back up into here. So you would have, these droplets would have come from a source that would have been up and to the left outside of the, the picture here or the image all right now some real uh, ways of looking at some of this all right let's just pick a simple one um, i'll pick this one up here we have the body of the uh, blood droplet it's right there and then you have your little satellite excuse me your spine it's not really much of a spine but it goes out here what you're going to find with more of your elongated the more elongated it is the more it's going to become more of like a instead of having a lot of spines you're just going to have the droplet into a small or short spine into a, a satellite right here okay so you have that um same thing kind of unique here that this had enough uh movement to it that it would have had uh, a the original droplet plus the slight spine, satellite, and even like a secondary satellite. Um, but either way, so what this is indicating, even if we didn't know exactly where it was coming from, we would have a pretty good idea simply to look like, hey, here's our satellite on this end, drawing a straight line, it's going to come back down from here. Same thing here, it's coming down, oops, excuse me, down and to the left, okay? So that's the main, that is the biggest thing to be able to get from uh, this and another question what kind of uh, velocity are we looking at here we're looking at medium velocity all right these aren't teeny tiny uh, droplets looking like a mist like you'd have a high velocity they're not round um, this is about as round as you get and that's not what we're looking for for low velocity so we are looking at a medium velocity example here same thing with this one um, and the same concept goes if I want to look at this particular droplet, what direction did it come from? Well, look where my um, satellite would be. You have this satellite and also this one here. It's going to tell me, yeah, down and to the right is where my source is from, right? And don't forget, you're looking at the totality of all these because you're going to have multiple patterns, right? Uh, it's not going to be just one directional pattern. If you get into an incident where there was an altercation, with multiple, um, uh, multiple people or multiple uh, strikes, um, 
and wounds. And then you're going to have uh, the movement itself within a uh, crime scene. You're going to have to be able to distinguish different pattern or one pattern from another pattern, um, even if they're part of the same incident. And you can do this by simply looking at, hey, what, what sort of patterns am I looking for? How do I separate them from another one? And so that being said, we'll take a look at some of the more specific patterns that we're going to be seeing. Falling droplets. Um, yeah, can we determine direction of travel even if it's at a walking pace or uh, something like that? Yes. Because going back to the satellites and spines, what side has the larger or longer uh, spines and even some satellites on here? It's going to be the left side as we look at it. Even over here, same thing. We don't have really any satellites per se except for this one, but we have more and larger or longer spines. So this side doesn't really have much. So therefore, it's telling, or by looking at this, you can determine it's moving from right to left. Okay. Um, that's falling droplets. Now, contact pa uh, deposit patterns. Think about it in the sense that you have, there's already blood on the surface. So in this picture here, um, it would be a, there's already blood on the uh, deck, okay? And there was a barefoot that stepped into the pool of, uh, or pooled blood that was already on the deck, okay? You can also see where there was a little bit of, you know, we had to look farther whether there was, uh, there was something else here, right? Whether that be, um, you know, footwear or something that was here, not just the bare foot, all right? But the main thing you want to look at with contact deposit, there's two things to consider. One, the body of blood or the pool of blood was already on the surface, okay? And two, something came in contact, like in this case, the foot, and all it did was displace the blood. It's not smearing it or it's anything else. It's just simply displacing it. Okay. That's how to distinguish contact deposit patterns. So talk about that. Let's talk about wipe. All right. So wipe can be sometimes confused with uh, contact in that blood is already on a surface. Okay. So those two things are in common, you know, when, the, when you're talking about contact or wipe. But with wipe, there is already blood on a surface, whether it be on a wall or on a floor or anything. But the difference is the object is being pushed or pulled or moving through the blood source. Okay. So what we mean by that is if there's already blood on the wall, like there is in this picture, and then we have a victim whose hair and during the altercation the the hair was moved through the the blood that's what's going to create this movement pattern you know it's been wiped through the blood that was already on the wall so that's the easier way to look at it is yes blood's already there but there's a difference between displacing blood and wiping it um, and creating like i said these, these hairs here are helping create a pattern of it's been wiped through the blood that was already on the wall okay and um, the next one that's close to, uh, or like I said, sometimes gets confused with wiping uh, would be the swipe pattern. What we're talking about with swipe is a little bit different. So rather than there already being blood on a surface, we are going to say that the surface is, for lack of better terms, clean, or it does not have blood. And what does have blood on it would be whatever comes in contact with it, such as a hand, a foot, arms, um, weapon, clothing, whatever. And when that blood comes in contact with the um, clean uh, surface, okay, I use that term, um, understanding that it's not the the ideal term, okay, I use it light, uh, loosely, but either way, Whenever you have the surface that is fairly clean and then you have something with blood on it coming in contact with it and swiping against it or uh, moving against it, leaving blood behind, 
that is what's considered a slave. Okay, you can see this with hands, arms, feet, like I say, almost any object. Um, but yeah, that's the biggest difference. Okay. And so let's move on from that to uh, people will say, well, uh, how do I know, uh, you know where someone was located as far as, you know, what if I get these linear marks? You know, like it doesn't match the, I have the blood spatter marks in one direction, but then I have these marks that look like they go in almost like lines or sometimes they'll be a little, <coughs> uh, a little rounded, but either way, what, what's causing this? And this is what we have with cast off. So anytime you have a, a weapon or an item that's got blood on it, it's being uh, moved through space, right? You're, you know, a, a backswing um, from you've struck somebody and they're bleeding or you have blood on the, object you swing it back and as you change directions to swing forward during that during that motion you are casting off blood um, due to centrifugal force right so you're moving that that blood gets cast off onto walls onto ceilings other objects um, so how do you determine first of all how do you determine what what these marks are and that's what I'm saying anytime you have a fairly linear uh, movement here okay that should tell you that that's a cast off it's medium velocity elongated and the vast majority of these droplets look like they're going in the same direction which will be in the backswing okay you'll get most of it during backswing as opposed to the downswing um, so either way and like for example for this one this is a good example here of where it is moving from as you see it on the screen from the left to the right okay and i can see at least four uh distinct patterns about what you know you have as far as strikes one two three four okay and does that mean the person was struck four times only no but i can tell you that it means that it's highly likely that person was struck at least four times. Why, why do I say at least four? Because in most cases, um, you will have had to have uh, had your victim be struck at least once before they start bleeding. And also, that object doesn't already have blood on it from a uh, from something before that, right? If it does, you know, obviously take that in consideration, but if that object had not been used yet or um, either way as it's swinging through air there's no blood to come off so therefore at least one strike without blood could have been more but that's what you look at is a minimum of one additional strike added to what you can determine by looking at the pattern okay all right um, and then arterial spurt there's not a whole lot of this that you'll get um, I know it sounds like it'd be oh it'd be fun and all that stuff, but typically you don't really see a whole lot of the arterial spurt simply because uh, you may have a um, if someone has their throat slit and it's more so like a cut of the carotid artery that goes up to the brain. Yeah, you may have uh, some, and they happen to be next to a surface or be down on the ground um, when that gets cut. Yeah, you may have a arterial spurt pattern there, but couple things affect that each time you each time your heart beats um, with it open like if you have a an incised or cut artery right blood's gonna leave um, and with less blood in your system you have lower pressure within your vessels and it doesn't pump it out as far okay now granted you may have adrenaline going or your victim may have adrenaline going but as the heart uh, as the volume of blood decreases so does the pressure inside the um, arterial walls all right so you have that and then your other arteries typically are set on far enough um, any artery of size put that way is going to be far enough away from your um, surface that it's not going to get a clean spurt out um, you know femoral arteries 
a large artery in your leg. Um, but most time you would have to, most of the time you'd have to cut pretty deep and hold it open for it to actually spurt out. Um, you'll get a lot of blood loss, um, and it may even be external, but by the time it gets to the uh, external portion of your body, that pressure of where it's coming out has already been decreased, okay? So uh, keep that in mind. But you're going to get with arterial spurt, you will see more of what's an arcing effect. High pressure pushing out, and then, you know, like I said, then it's kind of like, just like each, each pump of the heart, push, and then it decreases in pressure, okay? As it, in essence, as it resets, okay? All right, a um, couple other patterns I want to talk about will be the running pattern, which all it, I don't have a picture of it simply because all you will see, some places will call this a spurt, okay? A running pattern or a spurt, you can have blood hit a, a surface, especially a perpendicular surface or one that's you know upright, okay, a vertical surface like a wall or a door or anything along those lines, furniture, um, and the blood will hit it and you have enough of a volume of blood that it just basically runs down. Okay, that's why it's called a running pattern, but some will call it a spurt because blood has spurted onto that surface and gravity's pulled it down. That's all we're looking at. Um, easy way to do that is to if you have a sprayer you know that you would uh, you can spray cleaner or anything like that and you put it into a straight stream and you spray it against the wall yes blood's going to have a little higher viscosity or be a little thicker than regular water but if you uh, do that against the wall you'll get the same concept you'll get that's what a blood spurt or a running pattern would look like where it's hit the wall gravity pulls it down so all right, secondary spatter patterns, um, really simple. I would think most people would be able to, to understand this, um, but we have these patterns we've already discussed, you know, high, medium, low velocity, what that looks like. Talked about um, what each of these bigger overall patterns would look like. Um, but then when we talk about secondary spatter patterns, what we're talking about is, uh, earlier I mentioned the falling, <coughs> excuse me, the falling, uh, droplets to where, let's just say, if I am the victim and I am uh, in a chair, you know, with my arm slung over the side and blood is running down my arm, down my little uh, finger, and onto the floor, right? Well, if I have a little bit of blood that's pooled there and I've been there long enough, you know, I may still, whether I'm alive or not, it doesn't matter, okay? If I have enough blood that has gathered um, underneath where my hand is, or, you know, my hand and arm are dangling there. Enough blood has gathered underneath there, it kind of creates a small pool. Another drop is basically just going to hit that pool of blood, then have to be very big, and splash upward to the side. So I may have a pattern that's, if I'm close to a wall, that will be there. Uh, may even have a little splatter pattern that gets on the furniture, you know, the chair that I'm sitting in. That's all secondary pattern is saying is it's not from the original injury. It's not from impact. It is simply saying this is a secondary pattern from one blood droplet as it strikes another blood pool um, that has very little to do with the actual um, incident. Okay. So I hope that um, helps you better understand uh, blood spatter pattern. And those are the patterns I want you to be aware of, be able to distinguish. Uh, not only explaining them, but if you look at them to be able to determine uh, direction of, of travel or, in essence, origin. Um, if I give you the equation, I want you to be able to figure out what uh, the angle of incident would be. Okay. Those are all the things that I'm looking for and unfortunately with the setup of this course you know seeing that it's distance education you don't get the same experience that the students on campus get to do where we will spend <clears throat> excuse me spend a couple days uh, in the lab creating some of these uh, patterns and they get to see not only what they look like in terms of oh I just see it what's it look like but 
they get to connect the idea of, okay, this is how I struck the object or this is how it was struck. Now I see what it creates. And so therefore they can kind of connect the, uh, the dots between what they see and the action that caused that particular pattern. Um, so it's fun um, and everybody likes to you know cause a mess, but I, I do um, apologize for not getting a chance to, to let you guys, um, to all of you participate in something like that. But uh, hopefully this has been helpful. If you have questions, feel free to reach out to me uh, via email. I will help uh, try to answer questions that, you know, maybe something wasn't clear. Maybe you'd like for me to uh, go into more detail about it. If I can, I will. But either way, I hope you enjoy it. hope you're able to learn. And uh, I look forward to uh, seeing any of the questions that you may have. And I want to help you the best way I can. Have a great day.